Hey friends, Ash here with Jensen's. Hope that you're doing well. It's time to talk about one of my favorite fragrance notes, tobacco. So today I'm going to be going over five sweet tobacco fragrances that I think are fantastic, especially during this time of year, fall and winter. So let's just go ahead and jump right into this. Start talking about some sweet, sweet tobacco. Sweet tobacco. Oh, oh. oh boy. Let's kick things off with this bad boy right here, Mugler Pure Havan, one of my favorite designer fragrances in general. This one's got honey, tobacco, vanilla, and cacao, and this is one of, if not the first fragrance that comes to most people's minds when they're talking about a sweet designer tobacco scent that is really wearable and has a big time compliment factor. And as far as the entire Amen line goes at the tippy tippy top, you know, the Mount Everest peak of the Amen line, you basically have pure Havan and pure malt. Those two right there at the top. And for me, <laughs> it's really hard to say which one is better. Now of the two, I've worn pure Havan more, but pure malt is awesome also. And you'll have people just argue until the end of time as to which one of those is better. If you don't believe me, uh, go ahead and leave a comment below. Which one is your favorite, pure malt or pure Havan? And you guys fight it out in the comments about which one is better and why. So this one is really a honeyed pipe tobacco. Uh, they actually pitch it themselves as fresh tobacco leaves. And then I think a honeyed tobacco accord at least according to Mugler. And then the cacao in the base here, kind of a patchouli cacao, ties this in a bit with the original Amen. I think it's a wonderful fragrance. Absolutely, like I said, one of the tops as far as designer sweet tobacco scents go. One of the issues with that one that you may run into is that it's not really easy to find discounted. And frankly, sometimes it's not easy to find at all. And also it does have the Amen atomizer, which, um, <laughs> Yeah, let's just say it's not the best. One thing you can do to make it spray better, you know, hey man, can you spray better? Is to take a knife or another cutting utensil and basically cut around this indentation in the bottle. Yeah, you see that? Where you're supposed to put your finger when you spray? You basically just cut that away and then it frees up the atomizer there where you can just be like bam 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 and get some good sprays out and one thing i want to bring up really quickly is this fragrance insurrection 2 wild this is a very inexpensive clone of pure havan so if you don't want to spend too much money or pure havan is difficult to find or anything like that you just want a cheap alternative check this one out it's actually really good for the price and i like the presentation on this one as well though the coloration maybe doesn't look quite as good as it does on insurrection 2 pure this one ends up having the coloration of like dirty toilet water maybe it looks better on camera but looking at it right now pretty ugly fragrance is good though so no worries and guys before we go any further i need to thank the beast mode gents love you guys thank you for all the support everybody right here beast mode gent certified if you want to join the beast mode gents click the join button below or check the link in the description to check out the membership perks and potentially join thank you beast mode gents you guys are the best on to the next fragrance next up a classic a modern classic big time date night fragrance everybody knows this the compliment beast oh uh, you know what it is the one eau de parfum there's amber ginger cardamom grapefruit and tobacco in here. So while this is not a fragrance that's necessarily as tobacco forward as Pure Havana is, the tobacco is one of the stars of the show. This one's really sexy, sweet, and spicy, very well known for pulling positive attention and compliments, assuming that the other person can smell you. Because this is, after all, Dolce & Gabbana's the one. It's not really a projection monster, but the Eau de Parfum is much better in that department than the Eau de Toilette. So even though everybody knows it, everybody talks about it, and I always assume that everybody has smelled it, even though a lot of people still haven't, the one Eau de Parfum is one of my go-to tobacco fragrances for fall and winter, even if it's not maybe what you would immediately think of as a tobacco scent. Next up, a fragrance for the holidays, because it kind of smells like the holidays if your holidays include cinnamon, tobacco, and port wine. And I know they do, don't they? Yeah. It's Burberry London for men. Now there's also a bit of leather in here as well, but for me, this is more tobacco 
then it is leather. And this is my little wimpy baby one ounce bottle, but I also have a larger 100 ml size. This fragrance got hyped a good amount back in the day, but doesn't really get talked about anymore. I mean, the bottle does <laughs> kind of look cheap. I mean, maybe from where you're sitting, you know, looking at this through a camera, it looks okay. But when you hold it in your hand, eh, could be better. It's just a plain black bottle. And then you have this cloth kind of glued over top of it where the stitching is kind of up and down and all around. Ultimately though, that doesn't really matter. The fragrance matters and this stuff is great. Kind of like the one, the performance could be better, but the scent itself is amazing. I mentioned it before, but this is that holiday fragrance for so many people. You spray that on and you're like, oh yeah, that smells like November through New Year's, you know, family get togethers. Family get togethers in a positive way, not family get togethers in the, my drunk uncle has fallen through the table and, you know, torn down stuff off the wall as he fell and everybody else is fist fighting and stuff like that because your family is just completely dysfunctional. Not that kind of holiday. Day. The very positive and spicy holiday. <laughs> Burberry London is a fragrance that I fell in love with the first time I smelled it, which was this one ounce bottle. I had heard some good things about it. I placed the order. I was kind of half in, half out. You know, I didn't fully commit. Should have got a larger size bottle because what ended up happening was I got it, wore it a bunch, really enjoyed it and then bought a 100 ml bottle as a backup to this little one. Should have just bought the big size to begin with. We've got a nice cheapie coming up next. This one is from Guess, and Guess has some fragrances, actually the majority of them I'd say, that punch way outside of their weight class. Because let's be frank here, Guess is not really a fragrance house that people take seriously, or most people, because it's kind of a, you know, lower end fashion brand, I guess you could say. And so people just say, oh, guess, yeah, cheap crap that I see at TJ Maxx, but. But in this price range, which is like the $20 price range, sometimes 25, maybe 30 on the higher end, but you know, in the 20 to 30 price range, most fragrances are not that good. And yet consistently, the guest fragrances are. And this one is very solid. It's 1981 Los Angeles. This has plum, mint, tobacco, amber, and ginger as some of the notes in the scent. And it has more than a passing similarity to Versace Eros, which I know it seems kind of confusing. You know, Eros is not a tobacco fragrance. So if this smells similar to Eros, how is it on this list? Well, that would be because it's kind of like Eros with a twist. It has that mint, which is going to tie it in with Eros right away. So it has this kind of freshness when you first spray the fragrance on, but as it dries down, you get more of the amber and tobacco that comes out along with plum. So you're getting this interesting, uh, slightly darker fruity sweetness melding together with the tobacco and the amber. Yes, it does have that bit of a similarity to Eros, like I said, but it's really well done. For the price here, you would think it's gonna be complete garbage. And yet the longer it stays on your skin, the better it smells. So 1981 Los Angeles from Guess, absolutely a great reach in that price range for fall and winter and a solid tobacco scent too. Now I'm gonna cheat, I'm gonna do two more. So we're doing six. I'll go through them pretty quickly though, or try to. Next one I want to talk about is Tom Ford Tobacco Vanille. Feel like you kind of have to talk about Tobacco Vanille. If we're talking about sweet tobacco scents, this is like the granddaddy of them. Tobacco, vanilla, spices, cacao, and some fruity notes. Man, this stuff still smells as good today as the first time that I smelled it. There are a lot of fragrances that over time, over wear, it gets worn out. You just don't care to smell it again. You know, you're just kind of over it. It's like that song that at one point was a favorite of yours. You know, you would just crank it on the radio over and over and sing along to it and jam out and everything. And then one day you play the song and you're just like, I'm not really feeling it anymore. You know, that that switch flips and you just go, nah, on to the next one. That happens with fragrances too. And with tobacco vanille, it has yet to happen for me. This one is another one that's gonna remind a lot of people of the holiday season. You know, it's got that kind of feel with that, that spiciness, that warmth, that sweetness that this fragrance imparts and has fantastic, fantastic performance off my skin. I've said it before, say it again. 
For me, with Tom Ford Private Blend, basically you've got Tuscan leather and tobacco vanille as those fragrances that are like the, the foundation of the Private Blend. I feel like they've always got to be there. You know, if they get discontinued, I would just be mind blown. They are the first fragrances that I think of when somebody says Tom Ford Private Blend. Like I said, still to this day, I think Tobacco Vinny kills it. All right, number six, just kind of a quick bonus one here, Spice Bomb Infrared. Now there's a lot of different Spice Bombs that you could put into this list and they would count, but I think Infrared, if you're just looking for sweet tobacco, would be the one to go for. And that's because you've got cinnamon, you've got red pepper and red fruits in here as well. It smells almost like a cinnamon gum when you first spray it on or cinnamon candy. It's got that very sweet cinnamon aspect to it. Then as it dries down, the tobacco comes out like you would expect in a proper Spice Bomb fragrance. So if you're looking for a newer fragrance that's gonna give you that sweet tobacco vibe, that's the one that I would point you to right now. So there we go, five terrific smelling sweet tobacco scents. They're gonna absolutely crush it in fall or winter. Don't forget, put down which is better, pure malt or pure Havan. Thanks for hanging with me. Thanks for your support. Stay safe out there. See you guys tomorrow with another fragrance video.